Hello world and welcome back to Final Fantasy X. Now, this episode is a little bit special. The reason being, it's the second time I've recorded this. The first time I did it, it was going great until I reviewed the footage for editing. And there was a lot of audio errors. For some reason, there's crackling sound going throughout through the entire, well, not even the entire video, but like the entire later half of the video. Pretty much starting from when we board the airship until we're dropped off at Bevel. And I don't really have a good save point for when the audio issues start to when they end. But we're going to play this whole thing over again. And we'll pretend this is the first time I've done it. <laughs> now it's been a few days for me since I actually played this section. And I don't remember if I did the sphere grid before or after recording, but... I applied all the sphere levels just now, off screen. So the only thing we can do is go through these doors, and I think we still have that battle we need to fight. So here we go, cutscene. This place done for. You're right. You're right, Waka. We all bet we... We weren't always like this. Sin destroyed the island where we all used to live. After that, we were scattered to every corner of Spira. But then, my dad brought the all bed together again. If we put our minds to it and work together, then we could make a new home. Everyone worked hard. We had our home back again, but now, why did things have to turn out this way? Riku. Damn those Guado. What are they thinking? Yeah, how dare those Guado do their duties and... Yeah. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll explain what I mean by that in just a second. Um, so for right now we have two Chimeras we can fight, as well as a Guadalupe Guardian. If memory serves, we fought these enemies already, so we don't technically have to leave this battle in, but I will because it counts as a boss battle, more or less. Alright, so to start off, that Guado needs to go, so we're going to go ahead and use a Spiral Cut, hopefully it'll just outright kill. Maybe even overkill, let's see. Up, over, down, yes! And now Kamari's up next. There's nothing he can really do. I forget, did he learn Mug? He did. Nice. Go ahead and Mug for Lightning Marvel. Not too bad. I just realized it doesn't matter. Well, anyway. <laughs> um, for Lulu... Eh, it's kind of hard what I want to do for her because... Just because she's not really super effective against any of the enemies, but we'll go ahead for a Thunder Run. Not bad. Ooh, that good. Uh, okay. We're gonna switch out for Orin. He'll just do a regular basic attack, and... I wonder if he's strong enough to kill this guy in one hit. And he was! Nice! We'll bring out Riku so she can do a successful steal. Again, you get an achievement for stealing, I really want to say it's 200 times. It's between 100 and 200 times, but it has to be successful steals with Riku, and you get the Steam achievement, if you're playing this on Steam. I think there's a similar achievement on, like, the PS3, PS4, and others like that, but I don't remember offhand. Do it anyway if you're playing on console. Alright, Waka just going for a regular attack. He should, probably should have done a silence attack, but oh well. We'll bring Titus back out, and he'll just keep regular attacking. No, he won't, because his attack is halved. Right. So Lulu comes back out and thunder him. J just electrify them. <laughs> After breath, I should have done something different. Oh well. And Orin will finish it. Fairly easy battle, but you can't really flee from it, so you gotta win. Yeah, not that bad experience. Again, this isn't a bad place to grind if you really want to. You don't have to. By all means, do it if you want. It's not bad. I would recommend it if it's your first time playing. 
And here comes another cutscene. Sort of, kind of. Again, this is one of the weird times where they kind of split the cutscene in half. But I guess it makes sense considering we just got out of a battle, but still. Alright, just come right down the stairs. I don't know if I had mentioned this before, but I think there's an outlet right here? Somewhere? <clears throat> My voice is cracking. Oh, jeez. <laughs> uh, I know there's been a few in here so far. I don't remember if there's one in this corridor or the one with the safe sphere. But it's, there's one somewhere. I know that. When you're ready, go down the stairs. Riku, what is the Summoner's Sanctum? The Summoner's Sanctum is where we keep the Summoners. We keep them safe there. You kidnapped them. I know it's against the teachings and all that. I get why you did it, but... Well, I sure don't get it, Waka. They might get hurt on their pilgrimage. So you kidnap them? I mean, if the summoners don't do their job, then who will beat Sin? You want to protect them, I know. But Guardians are there for that. If Guardians do their job well, Summoners will be safe. Right? Right? It's quiet. Kimari goes now. Now, at this part, it's a very heavy moment, and I feel really bad for talking over the music. But something I really love about this game, the music really amplifies the feeling you're meant to feel, I guess. And it does a really good job at it. But what I was saying before about the Guado is, not all Guado are bad. The ones we've been fighting... They're just doing what they think, or not even what they think, they're doing what their leader has told them to do, what Seymour has told them to do. Not all Guado are bad, just the ones we've been fighting for that reason, the ones that mean to do harm. But anyway, in terms of story, yeah, there's more going on than what Titus originally thought, and it's leaving a really heavy feeling on our shoulders right now. Because this could be something bad, and it's something that nobody has told us up to this point and we're about to find out what so here we go She's not here. Hello again. Wait there until we have performed the sending. They died. Protecting us. It's not much, but the least we can do is give them a proper sending. Hey, um, what sacrifice? They all bet that summoners were being sacrificed. That summoners shouldn't have to do a pilgrimage. Why couldn't they trust guardians to protect the summoners? The all bet had no right stopping their pilgrimage. The pilgrimages have to stop. If they don't, and they get to Xanarkin, they might defeat Sin. Yuni could... But then she... Yuni will die, you know? 
You know, don't you? Summoner's journey to get the final Aeon. Yuna told you, didn't she? With the final Aeon, she can beat Sin. But then... But then... If she calls it, then the final Aeon's gonna kill her. Even if she defeats Sin, it will kill Yuni too, you know? Was I the only one who didn't know? Tell me why! Why were you hiding it? Why didn't I know? We weren't hiding it. It was just too hard to say. Tried to stop her? She follows her heart. You know, she knew what she was doing when she chose to become a summoner. To face sin, yeah? You know, knew. But Waka, that's just totally wrong. Summoners shouldn't have to sacrifice themselves just so the rest of spirit can be happy, right? fear of sin, you know that. A world without sin. That is the dream of all Yevon's children. And we will use that power even if it means our lives. You got pretty good. You sound sad. Yeah, maybe. Want a scream? Mm hmm. I really don't think that's gonna help this time. You know what? Hmm? It's embarrassing to say this myself, but summoners and their guardians are kind of like Spira's ray of light. A lot of people in spirit depend on us. I learned to practice smiling when I'm feeling sad, you know. <laughs> I know it's hard. Yeah, I understand. I think. Right, now let's see what you can do. I 
I want my journey to be full of laughter. I can't let her die. I'll find her. Now things are starting to come together. If you recall in a previous episode, we ran to Isaru on um, in the Jose Temple. And Yuna made a comment saying we should hurry before we knew who was actually in the temple. Now it makes sense. Yuna, well, rather, any summoner who goes on this pilgrimage wants to be the only one who risks their life, or their life, to sac to, um, I can't speak. <clears throat> what Yuna said back in Jose Temple makes absolute sense if we think about it especially now that everything's coming together when Yuna said we should hurry when we found out there's another summoner in the temple she didn't say that as in oh we should hurry because we got to do this first we got to beat him technically yes but at the same time not in the way I originally perceived it to be what she was actually saying is oh no we have to hurry we can't let this other summoner sacrifice his life to save Spira. If anyone's going to do it, it's got to be me so no one else has to do it. That was Yuna's line of thinking. However, I think it's kind of dumb. Well, not dumb, but it's weird that particular plot point would come out of nowhere and hit us right now. Granted, it was hinted at a few times that there was something else going on behind the scenes that we just weren't uh, verbally told about. At the same time, though, it seems to come out of almost entirely left field that a summoner, Yuna in this case, will die if she gets the final Aeon. It kind of makes sense, but at the same time, like... I don't know. Not that it's a bad thing. More so, it just seems like they needed something heavy and drastic to place on the player and they decided to do it at this specific point and it had to be this heavy. Anyway, I forgot to mention the items we got from the chest. It was a, the first two in the previous room was a level 4 and a level 2 uh, key spheres and that one was 10,000 gil, so not bad. I don't think there are any primers on this particular path, but just go over here, run up the stairs and... Does this look familiar to anyone? <laughs> this is actually the airship we dug up in the very first episode. Odesha, go, go, go! Three minutes marked. Reno, Reno, we reach a one minute. Where's Yuna? I don't know how you put. I don't know how you major. I said, where is she? Answer me, answer me, damn you! What do you do when you find her, eh? I, I... I didn't know anything about what a summoner is... is supposed to do. And I told her all those things without even knowing. I've got to tell her. I've got to tell her I'm sorry! That's it? You're gonna tell her you're sorry? And then you just drag her to Zanakin and make her fight Sheen, huh? You're all the same. Let the summoner die so we can live in peace! No! Ah, words! Show me action! I'm telling you, she won't die! Boy, don't forget those words. Because if you do... I'm going to make you regret it. I won't. So you know where she is? Of course not! That's why we're going to look! 
using this airship. Uh, airship? Nathan, Nathan do coup. Marine, evil maker, one thousand years, Ujantia. Fred Dutcher, we chose. E A U E. No, 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 no. Ren Mi Ri. Yo Chu Yo Ko. Asa. What's going on? We're... we're gonna blow up our home. How? With one of the forbidden machina. Hey, go! Mira! Hey, look, don't get so down. Boom! <laughs> like happy festival fireworks, yeah? You can cram your happy festival, you big meanie! Okay, hopefully the audio is still playing and there are no issues at this point. <laughs> anyway, I also misspoke earlier. It was the second or third, I think it was like the third episode, where we uh, uncovered this airship. My fault. <laughs> now, there's a few things to know. If you come over to Waka, you can recruit him to the Blitzball team again. And why not go ahead and do so? 99 games, 1 gil per game, 99 gil right off the bat. He's probably the cheapest player you can get, and probably the most useful player you can get. You can also come over here and recruit Buddy, or sorry, not Buddy, <laughs> Brother. His salary is 210 a game, but, eh. I, I don't know, I wouldn't recommend hiring him. He's not horrible, but for his stats, especially for his race, there are other Albed that are probably better than him. You just have to hold out until you can recruit the better ones. 
And that's pretty much all you can do. Or at least for right now. I think you can talk to Sid and he'll explain a few things, so let's go ahead. Did you find out anything about Yuna? I'm looking into it, okay? <sighs> Don't worry, I'm using a sphere of cellophinder. If she's out there, we'll get her. A sphere of cellophinder? It's an ancient machina. I don't know how it works either, so don't ask me, okay? And do you still use it? <laughs> I don't even rightly know how this rig flies, either. <gasps> All cause of the Yevon taboo on Machina, we're running around in the dark here! Ain't it a rush, kiddos? I also forgot to point this out. Sid from every other Final Fantasy, ladies and gentlemen. And my god, he is awesome in this game. <laughs> I still like... Actually, I think 7 and 10 Sids are tied for my absolute favorite Sid of any game. This guy is just awesome. He's flying this airship and doesn't know how it runs. And he doesn't care one bit. I love it. I mean, until we crash and everything, but that's the second point. Anyway, since we have some time here, let's go ahead and roam around the ship and explore a few things. You can talk to the Albed Sykes that are down here, talk to Osaru and his guardians, explore the ship. If you come over here, you'll find the uh, thingy that brings up your like, uh, sphere, uh, Albed Sphere compilation thing. You know what I mean. And if, again, if you have. If you played this game before and have Albed primers from the previous save, you can load them from that. Otherwise, I believe there might be one somewhere on the floor here. So after that, just come right back up here. Now you can go into the bridge for the next cutscene. However, going from what we just said, if you have all the Albed primers, what you can do is go up to Rin, and let's see what he has. Well, instead. well. It appears you too have escaped harm. You were on the ship too? I came to home to pick up some goods and found myself here. Quite the escape. <sighs> Thankfully, my goods were spared. Please let me know if you need any of my wares. Let's go ahead and check out his weapons. And unfortunately, they're not that great. Plus 5% strength or even plus 5% magic. It's not that good. It's not entirely worth it. I mean, for people like Orin or Riku, it might be. But you can very easily pass on them. It's not all that much worth the money. You'll be getting weapons similar to these pretty much for free in uh, upcoming battles. It, it's not entirely worth it. You can also buy a HP plus 10% armor it only comes with one free slot so you're not going to be doing much with it again it's not entirely a bad buy i just wouldn't recommend it now the thing i want to show you guys is after you're done buying stuff thank you your patronage is very much appreciated all proceeds will go to help restore home if there's anything i can help you with in the future just ask Asa, we topped. Janokut. Wiraja fam may not win Dukia. Eiko, ule we goof tren elk. Dat reg drat shofunt lusa, drid falum timgu, edix wo wicked tat. Eis ribidu. Rana in the cart, du lukne dimida winchelag. And that is our reward for getting every Albed primer. If you talk to Rin at any point in the airship, he'll give you Underdog Secret times 99. What that will do is give any weapon of your choice, I believe, double overdrive. That is nice, and I want to say there's something better, but I might be thinking of triple AP. In any case, it's really nice. There's a trick you can use with this uh, with these items and that double overdrive ability to give you like massive AP. We'll go over that in a future episode, but for right now, getting it this early is still pretty nice. 
if you don't if you don't care to apply it to a weapon, I believe that's a really good mix option or mix item for Riku's Overdrive that will have her use a very awesome ability if memory serves. Again, it's been a while, so but we'll get to mixes like actual mixes later on. I realize I haven't covered Riku's Overdrives too much, but again, you, it's it's kind of a hit or miss with her. Even if you uh, know what, even if you uh, have on record in her overdrive menu, which uh, mixes you've already done, it doesn't show a list of the different components to that mix. So even if you've gotten, say, Potato Masher once and you don't remember how to do it, you're not going to know how to do it again unless you have a guide. Which I'm sure there's plenty of guides for any of Riku's mixes online right now. I'll definitely refer to them when we uh, actually have use of her mixes, but you know, that is neither here nor there. That is in a later episode. Right now, we're just happy to get our underdog secret. Dragway. And that's pretty much all you can do. Actually, one more thing you can do. If you come into this compartment and go into this hallway, you'll find Donna on the floor. Look, I'm really tired. Leave me. If it's not an emergency, would you mind leaving? <sighs> okay. Wait! Uh, there's... something I want to ask you. What would you think if I said I... I was giving up my pilgrimage? Now, it doesn't really matter what option you choose, it doesn't have any, I want to say either any direct effect or any effect whatsoever on the outcome of the story. You can say, who cares, or sure, sounds good to me. Honestly, I think they turn out to be the same thing either way, but we'll go with sure, sounds good to me. Why should one more summoner have to sacrifice her life for the better of all of Spira? Why did it have to be her? So we'll turn her away from it. Unusual. Most people would never forgive a summoner who quit. Why is that? Behind my back, they would say I was abandoning my duty. So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? Easy for you to say. But uh, you do have a point. Maybe Bartello and I should go someplace far away. Huh, someplace far away. Like, Killica, perhaps? Eh? Eh? <laughs> anyway, you can come in here and explore this compartment. There's just more out bed, nothing to worry about. Uh, you can also explore the upper decks and attempt to go onto the roof of the, of the airship. Not that you could at this point, but there's not much else you can do. Dalben will make some reference to recognizing you and how this is the airship we dug up from the ocean in like a third or fourth episode, like I mentioned before. But aside from that, it's really, there's really nothing else you can do. When you're ready, head back to the bridge. After rescuing Yuna, then what? You want to keep her safe, correct? Would you seek to stop her pilgrimage? Of course! If she continues this fool pilgrimage, she will die. Sure as if you killed her yourself. No harebrained law or teaching could send my little niece to her death. When I save her, I'll make her give up being a summoner quicker than a desert melts ice. Even against her will? Better than a dog's death. And I'll take down anyone who don't agree! You are the captain. Good! Then it's settled. So yeah, we're kind of uncertain of what we're doing. Arn wants Yuna to continue the pilgrimage. Sid, her uncle by the way, in case no one caught on to that, he wants her to, to give up the pilgrimage. 
So we're kind of at a standstill and basically nothing's been decided until we rescue Yuna. And to do that, you just go right up to brother and... Vidran! For Fort Yuna! Frana! Efim Krufui! Yuna! Was that? The palace of St. Bevel, heart of Yevon. Gramps, let's move! Easy, kiddo. Bevel's defenses are top-notch. What's the matter, Gramps? Are you scared? Yuna's there, so we go and get her! And that's all! <laughs> you got guts? It'll take a while to get to Pavel. Meanwhile, we prepare for battle. Okay, now at this point, uh, just a bit of a warning, fiends are going to attack the airship. I didn't do this already, but there's a save sphere here. Make sure you touch it, make sure you save it. I'm not going to save because, as I stated before, I've already played this part of... I played this part of the walkthrough already. I'm not going to do anything different, I'm not going to save over it. I'm going to apply the sphere level, so we'll be right back. So the only thing to do here is leave the bridge and prepare for battle. We are being attacked from within. Some of the guado that attacked home must have snuck on board. You're awfully calm about it. I am calm about most things. Fiends! There's nothing to do but... But destroy the ship and all go down together. Huh? Huh. You gotta learn a little restraint, Pops. If you crash the ship, we can't go rescue Uni. Leave the fiends to us professionals. Yeah, let's go. Thanks. Riku, you've made some very good friends, I think. Good luck. As you may have noticed, the corridors are all cleared out. Another thing I forgot to do, Titus is going to be useless in the next fight if you leave your Brotherhood Sword equipped. I would recommend switching to anything other than elemental weapons. And if you have like Slow Touch, Dark Touch, or other things like that, those will be more useful than anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and... I feel like I want to do slow touch, but I don't know. I think I'll go with dark touch. That'll be the most useful. Make sure none of your physical attackers have any elemental weapons. Because the boss fight will... The boss will just half all elements. Meaning even Lulu is at a disadvantage. So when you're ready, just go down the corridor. You're going to run into some very familiar boss... Or not boss fights, but just regular fiend fights. You can fight if you want, they're pretty decent uh, experience. They're the same enemies we fought in the uh, in the Albed home. So do what you will, do what you can, and we'll we'll meet you in the cabin. And here we are back in the cabin. The way to get here, since I didn't show it off earlier, just follow the hallways up to this point. Save at this safe sphere first and foremost. Again, I'm simply just gonna touch it. Then you just climb up and around, talk to these guys, and one of them should give you four outbed potions. Now, if memory serves, we should either be at 100 or, well, not 100, but 99. You know what I mean. And that's actually pretty nice. Again, it's basically high potion, 
that heals everyone and includes uh, it includes healing stuff for poison, silence, and petrification. And that's very nice in the upcoming boss fight. So before we continue onward, I would recommend making sure Titus is in your party first and foremost. Probably bring in Riku. And I'm sorry, not Riku. Bring in Lulu, Titus, and probably Kamari. Bring in the three. Uh, mm, I don't know. This is kind of tough. You know what? No. Bring in Riku, Kamari, and Lulu first. They're the ones who are going to do the least amount of damage. So when you're ready, head up north and. Uh, now there's a rare sight. Whoa, that's huge! What is that? The Guardian Worm, Evre. The great sacred beast, protector of Bavel. <laughs> the red carpet has teeth. Wait, that means we're close to Bavel. Riku, you read me! We're gonna fight that thing! Get on deck and show him what you got! Go! There he goes again! The ferryman asks a high price. And as you can see, Rin has run. Rin has run. No. <laughs> Rin ran to the elevator. Yeah, because that sounds better. The point is, he's there. You can buy weapons, items, stuff like that. Um. I'm gonna skip talking to him. He provides nothing new. We'll just head up the elevator and run right out the door. Here comes the boss fight. Hope everyone's prepared. Battle of Everett. First thing to start off is it's telling us how to maneuver the ship, how to do stuff, and yeah. Only Titus and Riku can give orders to pull back or move in. That's why you need at least one, if not both, in the active party. And that's why we chose Riku to go first. Unfortunately, Riku is kind of useless, like I said. She can do mixes and other stuff, but she's not going to be doing it too much. We're just going to go ahead and steal, and as you see under his uh, info, under his HP meter, every element is halved. The only thing that can really hurt him magic-wise is flare and other non-elemental spells, but we don't have those yet, so the only thing we can do is steal and hope for the best. Water gem, eh, I'll take it. With Kamari, well again, there's nothing he can really do. I could cast Scan just to keep it on him. I forgot exactly what party members have sensor and which don't. Just to give you a heads up of what he's immune to and stuff like that. Magic Break. He's immune to Armor Break, so that's going to be rough. He is not immune to Darkness, though. We'll definitely be using that to our advantage. He's also not immune to Slow. Okay. Ooh, that hurt. Yeah, his physical attacks are pretty powerful, and against someone like Lulu, I'm lucky that wasn't a one-hit kill. And she literally cannot do anything. We're gonna go ahead and just cast Thunder, I guess. We'll just to show you the damage she'll do. 
I'll give you a hint. Not very much. Yep. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is bring Titus back in, I believe. He's gonna go ahead and just do a regular attack. Not bad damage. We'll bring in Waka. I feel like he's gonna have to heal Lulu. I have a bad feeling about her being alive, so high potion. And he went for Titus for ouch type of damage. Wow. Okay, I think our best bet is to go ahead for attack wheels. Hopefully it'll do damage if I can nail it right. Yes, got it. I almost thought I messed up there. But now this should hit for... I forgot how many hits. I counted 13. I guess there's supposed to be 16, but I don't know. I, I never see it. But yeah, that dealt a pretty decent amount of damage. Not a whole lot, unfortunately. We're going to go ahead for... Actually... Yeah, I don't think we have a choice. It's either I do pull back now and he doesn't do what I think he's going to do, or I do sword play and... Yeah, I think I'm screwed no matter what. Let's just go in for a regular attack, see what he does. Yeah, yeah. Worst case scenario, I can bring in Riku. I think. No, I can't, because if, even if I do, I'm still in trouble. Alright, we'll just go for a regular attack. We'll bring in Orin. At the very least, he can do pretty decent damage on his own. Haste, okay. That's, the trick here is you can either cast slow or dispel the haste. The problem with that is he'll cast it again. That's why you need haste again to keep up with him. And what he's doing now is... Yeah, that's bad. This will... Yeah, hurt pretty bad. The only thing you can do here if you want to cure everyone is bring in Riku and have her use special out bed potion. It won't heal or resurrect Titus, but... Actually, you know what? Let me bring uh, Waka back out. Have him use uh, Phoenix down on Titus. Hopefully, he doesn't. Hopefully, everybody doesn't kill him again. Or Waka. Stone Gaze, no! Oh, that's what I was afraid of! That's also what I was afraid of! No! Okay, this is really bad. We're not gonna get the overkill. I have pretty much messed up really bad. Like, really bad. Okay. We're gonna Kurega Waka. And he's gonna do a poison breath, which is probably either gonna kill me or otherwise. Here comes the bad. Did not kill me. Okay, that's not horrible. Um. I can bring Titus back out. I'm gonna go for the Blitz Ace, and I hope this does the trick. Come on, do a good job. I got a feeling it's not gonna do the trick. My my Ace in the hole was Orn using Shooting Star, and that would have done like max damage for an overkill. Mm -hmm. This might not. It did not. Only that mu Are you kidding me? Okay, so I'm not gonna get the overkill. In fact, I'm not gonna get anything at all. Uh, you know what? I know something that might work. Uh, let's try two bomb cores. This is my only shot. Please get the overkill. It's not gonna do overkill. Oh, it did! Nice! Oh, wow, uh, and Riku died. <laughs> oh, that would have been so, so bad. Oh. I'm gonna let you guys know now. 
the battle I had the first time went so much better. But yeah, Riku died, no experience. Orin was stoned and shattered, no experience. That's the first time we've seen that happen. Oh, I was actually worried about that because if something happened where Titus died the same way, just basically through poison, I could have had a game over right then and there. The thing is, it doesn't matter if you beat the battle. If something happens to your party and they're all wiped out, it's game over. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. But that's what we get for an overkill. Two black magic spheres, and those are always nice. And of course we get a soft bracer for Orin because, you know, feel bad for us after the fact. <laughs> And it's right about here where I where I ended the video last time. The next time when you watch when you watch the next part of the video, there's gonna be some changes because again, I this is the second time I recorded this whole section, and we did a little we did a few different things and yeah, it'll just be a little bit different. But at any rate, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you in the next one. Technically from the past. Ooh. Bye world. <laughs>